So, in the previous class, we talked about problems where uh, players were allowed to get into binding contracts with each other and we asked what kind of payoffs that can players achieve or uh, that are attainable by the players under such kind of contracts. So, we were not talking about designing uh, a, the optimal contracts, but rather asking okay, if, the, if players have to get into binding, uh, have the option of getting into binding contracts and arbitrary contracts are allowed, what kind of contracts would they sign? And, and with such uh, contracts being added and augmented with to the game, we wanted to know what kind of payoffs can be achieved, right. So, our uh, today what we will do is we will relax the condition that players are allowed to get into binding contracts and we will, we will, we will however, still allow players to communicate with each other, right. So, there will be communication and players will have a wide amount of communication possibilities, but they will not be allowed to get into binding contracts, right, all right. So, that does not mean that binding contracts are, uh, are, are, are impossible, it just means that every contract need not be binding, all right, okay. okay. So, now in order to uh, talk about this, let us, let us consider the following, uh, we will we'll consider the following game as an example. So, we have a game with two players, player 1, player 2. Player 1 has two, two strategies x1, y1. Player 2 has two strategies x2, y2. The payoffs of the players are 5 comma 1 here, 5, uh, 1 comma 5, 1 comma 5 here, 4 comma 4 here and 0 comma 0 right. Now, there are three Nash equilibria in this game, you can eyeball them quite easily. The first Nash equilibrium is x1, x2, there is another Nash equilibrium which is y1, y1, y2 and in addition to this, there is also a mixed Nash equilibrium uh, in which player 1 randomizes uh, say half x1 comma half y1. Half x1 comma half y1 for player 1 and half x2 comma half y2 for player 2. And the payoffs that they get are you get 5 comma 1 here, 1 comma 5 here, and you can check that they get 2.5 comma 2.5 in this. So, the problem that we now we are now going to address is where players are allowed to communicate but not, uh, but there is no scope for them to get into binding contracts, all right. So, uh, the question therefore, for us is, okay, what, what does it mean? What kind of strategies are now feasible now that players cannot get into, can communicate, but cannot get into binding contracts, right. So, in the absence of communication, players were, were, were randomizing independently. So, each player was choosing his or her mixed strategy independently. So, and from there we, we concluded these three as being the Nash equilibrium of, again, of this game, all right. However, now that communication is allowed, players need not randomize independently, means players could potentially enter, do enter into correlated randomizations, all right. So, in particular, they can in fact play what is any correlated strategy, right. So, any correlated strategy. mu in this, okay, I am using the notation from the previous class. So, any correlated strategy could uh, could be used, but, but remember when you, when players say well, let us play this correlated strategy, what does it mean? For example, it would say, let us say it could, a one correlated strategy would be, uh, there are these four possible combinations here. It a correlated strategy could say, well, we'll we'll play each of them with uh, probability one fourth. Okay, so x one x two with probability one fourth, y one x one y two with probability one fourth, etc. etc. Okay, now or it could be that players could say, well, let's play x one x two with probability half or y one x two with probability half. That's another correlated strategy. 
or another possibility is let us play x1, x2 with probability half um, uh, and y1, y2 with probability half, etc. Now, remember any correlated strategy that they just discuss and talk about is not binding on the players. So, they may say, okay, let us play this. But when they actually go to choose a particular strategy, they may not actually stick to that, stick to whatever correlated strategy is part of the plan. So, what kind of strategies can actually then be, uh, are actually feasible under the fact that players can communicate, but there is no binding agreements. So, can, or rather let us say forget, forget what kind, can you give me an example of a strategy that is feasible under uh, binding agreement, but without, uh, under, uh, under communication, but with no binding agreements. So, you cannot just pick an arbitrarily correlated, arbitrarily correlated strategy because that is, uh, that, you know, that, that actually is, uh, uh, because there is nothing to bind the player to playing that particular strategy, right. There were also, see, remember, let me also point out one more thing. The set of strategies that can be implemented under correlation, under communication, but no binding contracts. Right? Now, that set of strategies. Okay, how is that related to the set of strategies that were that are implementable with binding contract, with communication and binding contract? Which one is the subset of the other? Which one? <laughs> of course, one is a subset of the other. That's why I'm asking this question. But <laughs> see, the point is, see, so think about it this way. See, if a strategy is of the kind that a player would not like to deviate from it, even though it is not binding. Then he would not, not like to deviate from it, even if it is binding, right. So, this, the set of payoffs that players can achieve with binding contracts is actually larger. So, the point is that once the, once players are allowed to uh, get into binding contracts, essentially that, that widens their scope of uh, uh, the scope of things that they can do. So, in fact, the kind of games that will result out of that are the kind of games that we just wrote in the previous class, where there is an extra contract and that there is an extra decision then whether to sign us that contract or not, right. So, contracts are the, so you, so what you have is a game that you begin with and then you extend that game with, with additional options that come from, from the contract and you ask which contract would you want to, would you want to uh, sign any of these contracts, all right. Knowing that when uh, when you sign, it is binding upon you, or whatever you are signing on. All right. Okay. So now that so the so 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 the so now with uh, binding contracts out of the question, what play what can players achieve with communication? So here I have to also make precise what we mean by communication. Okay. So again, once again, you can go in two different ways here. One, you can start modeling the, the operations of communication, where one player says something, then another player responds, or the third player says something, then the first player plays, responds, play, responds to the respond, etc., etc. That is effectively communication, all right. Or we say, well, we do not bother about who is saying what, we just say what is the result of all of this communication, in the sense that, in, in, the, in the sense that after all of this communication, what is the action that you are going to be chosen. Okay. So, this is what is this, this way of modeling uh, what it does is it makes communication implicit essentially. We are not modeling the actual exchange of signals, but we are saying what is the final result of those signals that are exchanged. All right. So, now here, so here what, what we are talking about is communication that is happening between that in which players are, are openly then directly communicating with each other directly communicating with you. I will, I will explain what indirect communication also means in a moment. So, what this means is that players can conduct a joint experiment like a coin toss or whatever, all observe the outcome of that experiment and, and then decide what, you know, and, and uh, other, other uh, decide what uh, they should be playing on based on an outcome of the experiment which all of them observe. All right. So, this is direct communication essentially. So, they can this is what it would mean to correlate their actions, correlate their actions, uh, you know, uh, by uh, this is what it mean would mean to correlate their actions. All right. So, now what, what do I mean by this? So, 
so I will give you an example of a strategy that play, uh, players can uh, can uh, can create. Now, with communication any correlated strategy could be used, but not every correlated strategy is something that they would want to stick to. So, I will give you an example. So, here is an example of a strategy that they would want to actually stick to. So, for example, they may say let us play the first equilibrium x 1 x 2. So, the, the uh, 3 Nash equilibrium right. So, you take the first equilibrium x 1 play that with probability half and play y 1 y 2 with probability half. So, what does this mean? How, how are we implementing this? Players toss a coin, everyone witnesses the outcome and everyone has agreed that this is what will be played with uh, based on the outcome. So, if it is heads you will play they would both play x 1 x 2, if it is tails they would play y 1 y 2. All right. The question, so you can, I can, this now is another option that is present in the, uh, that is now present in the game. Now, question is with this option, now player has to go back and, be, but before the coin is tossed, decide whether he actually sticks to this option or not. And so, what are we assuming when he sticks to this option? There is no, this is not a contract. So, what we are, uh, only thing, what is being assumed is that if one, a player will now can only unilaterally deviate from this all right so this they have come up with this particular distribution and now they can when it when it comes to actually playing they can only unilaterally deviate from this all right when it comes to actually pressing the button they can unilaterally unilaterally only unilaterally deviate so what does this mean for example if player 1 decides to deviate from this he can say let me play a pure strategy x1 or let me play a pure strategy x2 or may, let me play something else altogether ok. But play, but he is when he is unilaterally deviating player 2 is still assumed to continue to play according to this experiment. That means, if it is heads then he is going to play his portion of the strategy which is x2 and if it is tails he is going to play his portion of the strategy which is y2. All right. So, the question, so the question for each player is now assuming that the other guy is sticking to this correlated strategy, would I want to stick to it? Okay. So, now if you look at this particular, this particular strategy that has been created, is this something that uh, players would want to stick to assuming the other guy also sticks to it? Yeah. So, this is actually a combination of two Nash pure strategy Nash equilibria of the game. Right. So, it is been it is it is obtained by taking half of this Nash equilibrium and half of this Nash equilibrium. Now, if if a if player 1 suppose uh, suppose deviates from from x 1 to x instead of playing this suppose he decides to play x 1 ok. Let us take a pure strategy x 1 right. Then what what does what would what would happen because it is a Nash equilibrium he of course, here it remains x x 1 x 2 in this one, but here shifting to x 1 is actually not profitable because y 1 was the best response to y 2 because y 1 y 2 is an Nash equilibrium. Suppose player 1 plays x 1 as a deviation. from this half x 1 x 2 half y 1 y 2 this one ok. P 2 and P 2 continues to continues to play as per let us call this mu as per mu ok. So, that means, he, he is going to play. Uh, so, so uh, if since he is playing as per mu what this means is that if it is heads he is going to play uh, x 2 otherwise he is going to play y 2 which means that essentially he is going to play x 2 with probability half and y 2 with probability half right. So, player 1 suppose he deviates to a, let us say to playing x 1 then look at the payoff that player 1 is going to get player 1 that will get a payoff x 1 comma whatever it is that 
comes from uh, whatever it is that player 2 is going to do. So, he is going to do x2 with probability half comma y2 with probability half. This is the payoff that player, this is the deviation play, payoff to player 1, deviation utility to player 1. So, player 1 has has deviated from his uh, from playing x2 in this in this coin talk uh, in this in the tails event instead of playing x2 he is now saying he is going to play x1 right. So, then in that uh, not x2 what was I saying y1 instead of saying playing y1 he is going to play x1 right. But then y1 was a Nash equilibrium was part of a Nash equilibrium. So, what this means is this this here is actually less than equal to And the same thing would hold if I said if player 1 instead of playing x1 as a deviation was to suppose playing y1 as a deviation ok. If he instead played if I replace this thing by y1 here I, I would get y1 here out here and, and this would remain y uh, I would get this would remain y1 I would get y1 here sorry not here I would get y1 here in place of this x1. Now, the half here is not important at all actually that this is in fact 50 50 probability. What is important is that these are convex combinations of the Nash equilibria of the game. If there are more Nash equilibria you can put all of them in and you can uh, take all the pure strategy Nash equilibria and take their convex combination. In fact, you can take even mixed coil strategy Nash equilibria take their convex combination. And there will be no incentive for any player to deviate because whenever he deviates he is basically going all these inequalities are only pointing in the in one direction he is going worse off than in each of these terms right and you can deviate to a mixed strategy or whatever does not matter. So, which means then with this kind of direct communication where the mechanism is a, a joint experiment is conducted everyone witnesses the outcome of the experiment and uh, and uh, and based on that outcome the uh, the strategy this thing is chosen uh, the the, stra the strategy is chosen this is this kind of a uh, uh, this kind of uh, in this sort of uh, communication the payoffs that can be achieved are is actually the convex hull of this set of Nash equilibria of the game ok. So, the pay so payoffs that what does what do you mean by a converse? So, it is in fact, so that is the exact set of this thing. Uh, so, it is so you have the converse, yeah. In that sense, there is a converse, yeah. So, payoffs achievable ok. So, now these so once again I will emphasize this direct communication as an aspect because we I will now move to indirect communication ok. So, once again what is what are we assuming about the out uh, direct communication about communication here is that the the strategy is designed in such a way that it requires all players to witness the outcome of the experiment ok and then based on the outcome they have to take the uh, choose their choose their action. Right now, the uh, so observe now. You may think that okay, what is the big deal about observing the outcome of the uh, outcome of the experiment? But it turns out that if players are allowed to communicate indirectly, then they can actually do more. All right. So let's actually calculate the payoff for uh, uh, just for uh, for completeness' sake. 
So, what is the payoff that they can get here in this example? They can get 3 and 3, uh, no, half of half this and half this, they can get 3 and 3, right. So, the payoff that they can get is this leads to the payoff 3 comma 3 for the players. Now, can players do better than 3 comma 3 and that is what I will show you that it is actually possible to do better than 3 comma 3, okay, by, by allowing mediation. I mean you can, as the half is not important as I said, it is like uh, you can take any convex form. Uh. Yeah, 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 because each of these terms, right, there is an inequality. Oh, you mean this, um, the, you mean it won't be 3 comma 3 anymore, right? Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, but I, this is, I will just give you an example. I mean, this is, uh, so, so actually we, I will eventually, we will uh, uh, draw a figure in which all of the end, all the regions are uh, indicated. So, that, that is the, the 3 is not that important, that is actually the highest symmetric payoff that they can get, okay. So, because of symmetry that you will, you will see that they can in fact get do better through indirect communication. It would still be, uh, it would be still achievable under this, under this kind of communication, under direct communication, no problem, yeah. That would still be achievable under, uh, under direct communication. So, the set of payoffs achievable through direct, under di direct communication is the convex hull of all, all, uh, the set of all Nash equilibrium of the loop, okay. Okay. So, now, here is a, st now, as I said, this, this requires them to witness the experiment, uh, 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 witness the outcome of the experiment. Now, if you, let us now generalize this a little bit and what I will do is I will allow for mediation, okay. Now, mediation may look like, initially may look like I am allow bringing in one more player, you know, a mediator into the picture. But what you will see is actually that um, uh, there is, that mediation is in fact just another form of indirect communication between the players, okay. So, this was direct communication and we, where players are, uh, where all state, you know, players are witnessing everything together. You can, once you allow for indirect communication, you have, you, you are basically you are the, uh, you can actually achieve more, all right. So, now let us, let us bring in, so first let us bring in mediation. So, how does mediation, how would mediation work? So, suppose you have a mediator, okay. Now, what the mediator would do is, mediator would announce, announces that he is going to be using a correlated strategy, okay. Mediator announces a correlated strategy, strategy mu, uh, which is a probability dist uh, uh, distribution on the set of all actions. But now, here is what he would do. The mediator only communicates confidentially with each player, okay. There is communication only, there is no common experiment that he can, uh, that, that, that all players witness. He communicates confidentially with each player, means that he will tell each player a recommended action, right. So, the media, so he, uh, for example, he will tell play, uh, player 1, you, you play x1. He will also tell player 2 confidentially that you play y2, okay. Players would know that, uh, that uh, the recommendations are being generated from a certain correlated strategy, this correlated strategy mu, alright. But they do not know what has been recommended to the other player. They just know that the recommendations have been generated through this. They know their own recommendation. All right, but they don't know what has been recommended to the other player. Is this clear? This is the role of a mediator. This is indirect communication. Okay, so here's an example. So suppose a mediator recommends this. So with probability one third, he says you play your first Nash equilibrium x1, x2. With probability one third, you play y. I'm going to give you y1, y2. And with probability one third, you remember there was this another payoff here, four four payoff. Yeah, so with another probability one third, I am going to recommend you y1, x2. The, as I said, the, the mode of communication is this, that you have a mediator who talks confidentially to the players, okay. 
So, this is this is your echo uh, to, to player 1, this is your echo to player 2. Each player only hears his own echo. He knows that and each player knows that uh, the recommendation has been generated through this probability distribution mu. Is this clear? Okay. Now, what this does is basically what is happening behind the scenes is not known to the players. Players do not get to know what happened in the experiment. They just know what you, they, they just know that what part they need to play respectively, right. They just know that okay, mediator has told me to play this, I will, that's, that, that's what I need to, and that's what has been, that's all he knows, the player knows, okay. He does not know, you know, whether tails came, whether heads came, you know, whatever, whether eyes came or whatever, yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yeah. So, this is a trusted mediator, okay. So, the med you will later see that the mediator is actually just a, is not really another player, it is just an, uh, it is just a sort of a thought device, okay. So, eventually what we will do is we will reduce this to a game of in indirect communication between the players itself, okay. So, so for the moment, sir, so that is why I assume that the, you know, mediator is some, some software that they have. Uh, that is generating these recommendations and they have all trust, they all trust that software. So, the framework is like this that the mediator just recommends something to these individual players and now the, because players do not know what is happening behind the scenes, right, they each have partial information about what has actually happened, okay? they only know what has been recommended to them, okay. So, I will give you an example, you know, a lot of platforms we use today are actually of this nature. Right. So, when Google Maps tells you that you know take this route, you just know that Google Maps has told you to take this route. Maybe there is another person who wants to go from the same origin to the same destination and usko Google Map has said you know take some other route, okay. Or let us say in finance a broker tells you you know buy this, who knows maybe to some other client he is telling, uh, telling something else. He is saying do not buy this, buy the or buy that, buy something else or he may be saying sell this, right. So, all of these actually form, all of these platforms that we use are actually form, are what they are actually doing is doing this kind of mediated communication. We only know what has been recommended, we have a general impression of what kind, what you know how the recommendations are being generated. Now, if the platform is actually doing what it should be doing, okay, then it should it should be some uh, uh, if the platform for the platform to let us say be successful, what do, what do you expect to have what should how should it produce its recommendations. So, for example, why would I want to keep uh, uh, you know why would I want to keep using Google Maps? Or, or rather why would I want to follow the, the route given by Google Maps? So, it should, uh, if I deviate from Google what has been recommended to me by Google Maps, it should give me a higher travel time, right. I do not care what has been recommended to the others, what I only know is somehow Google Maps is figuring out its set of recommendations in such a way that if I stick to my, each, if I, if each guy sticks to his recommendation, right, then uh, the, uh, rather for each guy it is optimal to stick to his own recommendation assuming the other guys stick to it, okay. So, I will come to this point, remember this point. So, the essentially what is, what is going on with a mediator is some sort of this sort of partial information sharing, need to know basis, you, you each player is just told what his own uh, recommendation is and based on that he needs to now, uh, he needs to now take an action. So, but for a strategy to be implementable through a mediation like this, what should it satisfy? It should satisfy a basic obedience requirement that it should be, optim it should be in my interest to, op uh, to obey the recommendations given by Google Maps, assuming the others also are obeying. All right. So, let us come to, uh, we will come to this in a bit more detail.
So, here is then the strategy that this mediator announces. Okay. Now, what does this mean? Let us let us understand this a little. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, so let us see how this strategy would work. So, suppose the mediator says x 1 is the recommendation to player 1. Now, what does player 1 know from this recommendation? He knows that player 2 has been recommended x2 with probability 1. Since he is be player 1 has been recommended x1, he knows that this mediator's mediator's coin toss has resulted in this, right? Because that is the only way he gets to he gets a recommendation x1. So he knows that player 2 has been recommended x2. Now, if player 2 is playing x2, is it optimal for player 1 to continue to play x1? Yes. All right. So, if player 1 get here is x 1, it means that implies that player 2 has been recommended x 2. So, as I said this player this mediator forgot to write this it maintains partial information. Okay. Now, suppose um, the player 1 hears y 1 as a recommendation. Now, if he hears y 1, what has what does that mean? What can he say? If he hears y 1, then it means that either this has come about or this has come about. But because the players do not get to witness the experiment itself, he does not know which one. He just knows that one of these two has come about. But from there, what he can say is that well, player, player 2 has been recommended y 2 with probability half or it is that he has been recommended x 2 with probability half. Okay. So, there is a 50 percent chance that he is that player 2 has been recommended y 2 and 50 percent chance that he has been recommended x 2 that player 2 has been recommended x 2. Okay. Then player 1 knows that 2 has been has been recommended um, y 2 with probability half or x 2 with probability half right. Now, look at the payoff now. Now, suppose if you if player 2 is then going to be recommended x 2 with probability half and y 2 with probability half, then what is the pay uh, uh, then you have 50 ha uh, half of this plus half of this as the payoff that player 1 sees right. So, so what is the payoff he is going to get from x 1 he is going to get 2.5. What is the payoff he is going to get from y 1? He is also going to get 2.5. So, both x 1 and y 1 are giving, are giving him 2.5. He has been recommended y 1. So, it is in his interest to, to play y 1. Okay. So, in other words, he has no rather let us put it this way, he has no incentive to deviate from the recommendation. Okay. So, no incentive to deviate. from the recommendation uh, and a symmetric thing holds for player 2 as well. Now, with this now what is the payoff that they can get? Can you calculate? This is of course, again symmetric yeah they get 3, uh, three and one third. So, earlier they were getting 3 3 as the symmetric one this is they are get they get 3 and one third ok. So, the so, what has happened here the the way this has worked is this mediator has maintained a kind of confidentiality need to know whatever you uh, want to call it and through that implemented this strategy. Now, I will tell you you can see why confidentiality is actually important here. So, suppose ok suppose now here if you look at what player the case with player 2 ok player 2 has been recommended x 2 here. Okay, he is also been recommended x 2 here. Now, if player 1 knows ok, suppose this was the outcome ok, let us say this this thing was the outcome, then player 1 would get uh, outcome of the experiment of, of the coin toss. Mediator tosses the coin, it turns out to be this, this is the outcome. So, he will tell player 1 y 1 and he will tell player 2 y 2. Now, when player if the outcome of the coin toss is revealed to the player, 
then player 1 when he sees y1 he knows that player 2 has been recommended x2 if the outcome is also revealed to him then he knows that he has been recommended x1 and player 2 has been recommended sorry he has been recommended y1 and player 2 has been recommended x2 ok. Now, if player 2 has been recommended x2 is y1 the best response to that? No, y1 is not the best response, x1 is the best response right, x1 actually is strictly better than y1. So, player 1 sticks to playing y1 only because he is not being told what the outcome of the coin toss actually is. It is because player 1 is just knows this right, it could be a y2, it could be this with probability half or this with probability half and as a result of that player 1 agrees to play y1. If there is this too much information then, then player 1 would not would not agree to play y1 in this case. So, this is where mediated versus un unmediated makes a difference. See the direct communication that I was telling you is, is essentially where the players can observe the experiment itself. Whereas, here there is no observation of the experiment, they just observe the action that has been recommended to them, alright and there is a vast difference between the two, ok. So, here basically the mediator is saying, tum aam khao, gutliya mat do not worry about what is happening uh, behind the scenes, I have been, you have been told this, just, just do that. So, this, this is obviously a much more general strategy because now there is there is also a, a possibility of partial information uh, which is which is built in as a part of the definition of the strategy all right so with uh, with direct unmediated communication that such a strategy cannot possibly be played all right because players have to witness the experiment when they are when they are communicating directly so that so by by so you asked me what is the definition of direct communication direct communication is where the sample is actually is directly observed all right. Whereas, here a function of the sample is observed which is the action recommended action, is this clear? Ok. So, now let us come back to the Google Maps example. So, Google Maps is doing something like this, you know Google Maps, Zomato, all of these platforms they are telling us you know be, eat this, eat that, whatever, go take this route, they are suggesting us articles, etcetera, etcetera. What all of them are doing is something like this. If Zomato tells everybody to go and eat in a particular restaurant, everyone will go there and crowd the restaurant and nobody will actually get a great experience, right. So, the, the, the kind of optimal thing for Zomato to do is actually spread around its recommendations also, ok, thinking of various things and so on. So, 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 so actually then this kind of puts into uh, this thing, if you think of mediator not as a, as a fictitious entity, but in fact as a real player, then you can actually think of things like ok, what, what are the feasible recommendations, what recommendations maximize the mediator's revenue. Uh, the platform revenue, etc., etc., a whole bunch of other kind of questions can be thought through and thought about in this, okay.